Okay, let's talk about the circulatory system and why our heart makes those famous lub-dub sounds. We'll follow the journey of blood, but before we stalk it on its adventure throughout the body, let's first talk about the anatomy of the heart. The heart is made up of four chambers, two smaller ones called atria and two bigger ones called ventricles. In other words, we've got a right and left atrium and a right and left ventricle. The septum divides the heart into its right and left sides. Valves separate the atria from the ventricles. The valve that separates the right atrium and ventricle is called the tricuspid valve, because the valve is made up of three leaflets or cusps. It's also called the right atrioventricular valve, which is a boring but admittedly descriptive name. The valve that separates the left atrium and ventricle is called the mitral valve. Mitral comes from mitre, which is a ceremonial hat worn by bishops that some anatomists thought the valve vaguely resembled. It's also called the bicuspid valve because it's made of two cusps, or the left atrioventricular valve. Surprise, surprise! There are really big blood vessels that surround our heart. Blood vessels that go towards our heart are called veins. Blood vessels that go away from our heart are called arteries. Don't think of arteries as always carrying oxygenated blood, or veins as always carrying deoxygenated blood, because they don't, and you'll see what I mean a bit later. And as a side note, veins aren't actually blue, and deoxygenated blood isn't actually blue either. We use blue a lot in diagrams, but in reality it's just a deeper red. Our veins only look blue because our skin and fat tissue act essentially like filters that make them appear blue to the eye. Okay, back to the big blood vessels of the heart. The three veins that we should know about are the superior and inferior vena cava and the pulmonary vein, and the two arteries that we should know about are the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The vena cavas empty into the right atrium. No valves separate them from the atrium. The pulmonary vein empties into the left atrium. Once again, no valve separates this vein from the atrium either. The aorta comes out of the left ventricle, with the aortic valve separating the two. The pulmonary artery comes out of the right ventricle, with the pulmonary valve separating the two. These valves are also collectively called the semilunar valves. Okay, we're finally ready to follow blood through the body. First, the atrioventricular valves close, making a lub sound, and the semilunar valves open. This prevents blood from backflowing into the atria as the ventricles of the heart contract. We'll start with oxygenated blood in the left ventricle. As the left ventricle contracts, the blood is pushed through the open aortic valve into the aorta. The aorta branches off into smaller arteries and the blood circulates throughout the body, dropping off oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide and waste products. Deoxygenated blood comes back to the heart through either the superior or inferior vena cava depending on where it's coming from. If blood returns from the head and upper limbs, it returns through the superior vena cava, and if blood returns from the lower limbs, it returns to the inferior vena cava. Blood flows from the two vena cavas into the right atrium. Now, it's the atria's turn to contract. The semilunar valves close, making the heart go dub, and the atrioventricular valves open. The right atrium contracts, causing blood to flow past the tricuspid valve and fill the right ventricle. After the ventricles finish filling, the atrioventricular valves close, once again making a lub sound, and the semilunar valves open. As the right ventricle contracts, the blood is pushed through the open pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs, where it picks up oxygen and then returns to the left atrium via the pulmonary vein. Once again, it's the atria's turn to contract. The semilunar valves close, making the heart go dub, and the atrioventricular valves open. The left atrium contracts, causing blood to flow past the mitral valve and fill the left ventricle, and we're finally back to where we started. It's a dual circuit system, with one circuit that goes from the heart to the lungs and back, the pulmonary circulation so blood can drop off carbon dioxide and grab oxygen, and another that goes from the heart to the rest of the body and back, the systemic circulation, so our tissues can access the sweet, sweet oxygen it needs to survive. I like to think of it as a figure eight, with the heart in the center. Blood goes from the heart, to the body, to the heart, to the lungs, to the heart, to the body, rinse and repeat. The heart does this roughly 60 to 95 times a minute for the average healthy person, 24-7. Isn't that neat? 